Okay, when we're talking about brief exercise 14.6, again, it's a bond with an effective interest rate. So we've uh, basically issued the bond for 560000 at 7%, due in 10 years. Note again, it's semi-annually, so we're going to have to divide periods and rates by two. Um, but it says the bonds were issued for $521,000. So that's actually how much we received. So the first entry is pretty easy. Uh, it's cash. And it's right here from the, the numbers provided, so it's 521,948. Now, the bond payable is also pretty easy because right there is what we issued. So, bond payable is the 560,000. And if you remember from the last video, the difference is whether it's a discount or a premium. And since we're going to have to uh, debit to make it uh, balance, that's going to be a discount on bond payable. So it's just going to be the difference between the bond payable minus the cash. So there's our initial entry of receiving the bond. The next thing we're going to have to do is figure out what the interest rate is or that we're going to be paying. So first coming up July uh, 30 or July 1st, that'll be the uh, first uh, payment that we have of interest. So July 1st, 17. But to figure that out, we have to calculate what the cash out is and then also what the interest expense would be. Under the effective rate, the cash out is going to be the same. It's just always going to be this 7% times the 560,000 times 7%. But again, take half of that because we're doing it semi-annually. So if we take the 560 times the 7% uh, times 50% or half because it's you know, 6 twelfths essentially, uh, it's 19600 So that's going to be the payments that we are generally going to be paying uh, throughout the process. As it is what we're going to be paying out every single time. So we get the 19600 and that's what it'll be every time we pay interest out. So that's the amount. So what we have to do is figure out what the interest expense is. Well, the interest expense in an effective rate is going to be the value, the market value that you initially got it, times the uh, market interest rate, which happens to be 8%. But we're going to have to divide it by 2, just like we did before. So we'll have to remember that when we uh, calculate these out. So we're going to take the 521,949. We're going to multiply it by 0.8%. And also divide it by 2, or I'm going to just multiply by, by half. So that's the amount that we'll have as interest expense. So essentially our amortization is going to be the difference between these two, or $1,278. That's going to be part of our entry. So this is our entry right here. Cash out, interest expense, the discount on the bonds payable. What we'll do is we'll calculate what the new value is so that we can figure out the second payment. So it's the value. And we're actually going to be going up. So we're going to add this uh, amortization. So the next market value for payment number two, we're going to use the 523000 So remember, ultimately, we, pay, we got 521000 We're going to have to pay 560 We want this column, this value column, to equal 560 by the end of our time here. So let's just figure out payment two, just so we've got it already. So we're going to take the 523,000, we're going to multiply that by 0.08 and multiply that by 50% or divide it by two, however you want to do it. And that's our second payment uh, that we'll be doing now. And so we copy that formula down. So the discount on bonds payable will actually be uh, amortized again um, the next time at 1329 and our new value will be 524 going forward. Now, the problem stops here. So all we really need are these numbers for our entry. So let's go do that July 1st one, which is this first payment entry. So cash out the door. That's the easy one. We'll do that as our first one uh, because it's the 19600. It's just always going to be the 19600 until this bond is gone. Now, we now know what the interest expense is. The interest expense is the 20,878. 
and therefore our discount on bonds payable. And remember, it was debited, so to get rid of it, we're going to be crediting it. Crediting it. Discount on payable for the one two seven eight. And there's your entry. Now, when we do our December thirty first entry, or our yeah, our December thirty first two thousand seventeen entry for the end of the year, uh, we only have to make modifications to the numbers because the the accounts are going to stay the same. That's the easy part. Bring those accounts right on down. Boom. Now the interest expense is now going to be twenty nine twenty nine. What we have for our second payment. Our discount is going to be reduced by thirteen twenty nine. And then our cash is still going to be the same nineteen six hundred. So there is our entry for the third payment, and that is problem 14-6.